Hello, it's Dawn from Dawnversations. Today's episode is another impromptu one. I don't know why I just get these ideas in my head and then I'm just like, ah, I need to air it. Um, I was reading an article and then eventually I just went down a rabbit hole about loneliness and I wanted to do a podcast about it. And this probably won't be the only one that I do about it. Maybe I'll get an expert on that will have some actual um, expert advice because I am not an expert other than me myself going through loneliness at one time or another in my life. But yeah, it's really an epidemic and I wanted to talk about it so that people out there that are feeling lonely or alone don't think that it's just them. They don't feel alone in that feeling. So in my reading and watching videos and everything about it, this is what I came up with. And I'm super hopeful that this is an inspiring and good podcast episode. I am not trying to act like I am an expert in any way, shape, or form. I am not a replacement for a therapist or anything like that. And this does not mean that I have mastered um, the feeling of having tons of friends and um, being completely happy all the time. Okay, so that's my disclaimer. That is not what I'm saying about myself. In reading about it, I'm finding out more and more that loneliness affects everybody, young, old, in between, any point in, in their lives, in our lives, we have felt lonely or alone or like we don't fit in. And it's a terrible feeling. It's, it's not what we were designed to feel like. We are designed, our bodies and brains are designed for connection. And when we don't feel that connection, it leads us to say to ourselves, what is wrong with me? What is wrong with me? And that is why I felt compelled to do this podcast. There is nothing wrong with you. There is nothing wrong with you. If you feel lonely and alone or that people don't understand you, just know that everyone has felt that way or feels that way. No matter what they portray to your face or if you're watching people online on social media and it seems like, wow, they have the best life. They have so many friends. They have perfect outfits and hair and spouses, boyfriends, girlfriends, it's not a correct depiction of real life. You need to know that. Nobody's life is perfect. Being lonely can happen for elderly people, young teenagers, whether you've gone through a breakup, a divorce, a death of somebody that you love, or even in school, if you feel like you just don't fit in, quote, fit in, it can affect you emotionally and physically, and it can affect your long-term health, which makes it even more detrimental that we get this figured out and learn ways on being happy, feeling not alone. First of all, you need to acknowledge your, your feelings. You need to think about and realize how you feel and how it's impacted your life. When you think, is there something wrong with me? And you realize that other people are asking themselves that. Hopefully that will put a positive spin on it. So you realize, okay, if everybody else is kind of wondering what's wrong with them too, and it's not just me then I'm not alone. I'm not alone in this battle. Statistically, they say one in three people feel depressed and isolated and alone and lonely. One in three. So if you're in a classroom or in a meeting at work or you're at school or whatever, look around. One in three people are feeling the same way you're feeling. That's sad, but just knowing that I would hope would help. Being online can be a good thing or a bad thing. And here's, here's ways that you know if you should log on 
or log off. Being online and chatting or just getting on your social media and looking around and then um, reaching out to people that way through instant messenger or whatever, that can be a very convenient way to connect with others. Texting, all of that, that can be a way for you to reach out without having to leave your house. If you're just having one of those days where maybe you just feel icky or you don't want to get out of your jammas, you don't want to shower, you don't want to be around people, but you still want to make a connection, then being online is a super easy, accessible way to do that. Um, You can game, you can date online, you can interact with people easily on all kinds of sites and apps without having to go out into the world. That can sometimes help you feel like you're part of something and not isolated. So that would be a good good way to log on and be part of a uh, interactive social media type of experience. The bad part about social media and logging on is it can contribute to even worse feelings about yourself when you do see people that are portraying themselves to be living super exciting or happy lives, like, oh, they're so lucky, they've got so many friends, they've got nice cars, they've got nice everything, and it's just not reality. People are not going to put pictures of themselves looking scary or ugly (laughs) or or videos of themselves fighting with their spouse, or um, getting drunk, or overdosing. Like People are not going to portray themselves on social media that way, because people want other people to think that they've got their acts together. That's just the reality of it. And so you have to keep that in the back of your mind, that what you're seeing is not real. You know, obviously the suicide epidemic is just, it's awful. And it it just shows you how many people out there are actually just so depressed and alone and isolated. And it even happens to celebrities, people that we look up to or we see all the time as they have it all. They can have anything they want, whenever they want. They must have a perfect life. Um, Social media can make people feel inadequate left out, and feeling lonely. If being online makes you feel more isolated and less connected, it's time to log off. Bottom line. So I could tell you that there are ways in which you could get yourself out there and not feel alone or lonely by volunteering. Um, You might not want to hear that. Maybe you're like, I don't even want to leave my house. Would Quit trying to tell me that I need to go out there and interact with people. But truly, our bodies and our brains are made, made to connect. So the more that you isolate yourself and stay alone, the worse you're going to feel. That's just the, the truth. It's, it's fact. You're going to feel that way when your body and your mind crave and require connectedness. So if you want to volunteer, sometimes that can help fight the loneliness. It can ease stress and reduce your feelings of depression. And you have the potential to make new friends, which is always a great thing. It gives you feelings of being fulfilled, knowing that you're helping other people going to nursing homes and visiting senior citizens. I work with senior citizens and trust me, they crave the connection. Most of them, if they've lived long enough, have lost a lot of their friends already. And their friends have passed. Maybe they don't have family that lives around them and they love to tell stories and meet new people. It's something that's just they are denied that, especially if they are in nursing homes or kind of kept away from general public and their friends. Uh, you can go to a children's hospital. You can read to kids at school. You could work at a homeless shelter in a soup kitchen. You may not interact with the actual 
people, you know, like having just these wonderful conversations, but you're putting yourself out there and you're helping and service and helping is what we're here to do. Just that's the truth of the matter. We are put on this earth to serve and to help others. So you could find groups in your community or your church, find, um, there's apps. I think there's an app that's called Meetup. And it's an online platform where you can find or you can create your own group. And then you can talk to people about what you're interested in. Maybe you love sports. Maybe you love food and you just want to talk about food. I'm sure there's probably groups out there that just like talking about fast food. Who knows? There's something out there for everybody. Believe me, I learned that just getting on the internet. It's like, holy cow, there is a lid for every pot out there. Okay, um... Then there's self-care. You know, when you are down in the dumps, the last thing you feel like doing is getting out of bed or showering. But, you know, sometimes a shower can turn your whole day around. It just makes you feel so much better. Exercise, which I need to work on. Believe me, these are not things that I'm trying to say that I'm a pro at or I do all these things when I'm having a crappy day. But they're things that are known to help. Like they're actually known to help. So exercise, it triggers endorphins, which are your happy hormones, and they help you to obviously feel happy. Uh, the sunshine, get yourself out in the sun. Sunshine also helps with endorphins and serotonin, which all have positive benefits. Um, eating a healthy diet, yeah, blah, blah, blah. I know nobody wants to hear that, but eating good things that aren't processed, aren't full of sugar, it does make you feel good and you can hate your vegetables, but they love you and they love your body loves it too. Sleep, make sure you get good quality sleep, staying up too late or sleeping too long can all make you feel like crap. So make sure you get lots of good quality sleep. Don't have a lot of sugar or caffeine before bed so that you can really get good quality sleep. Just know that... Loneliness can affect millions of people, not just you. I think that's the mindset we get into when we're having a really bad day or we're feeling like nobody understands us or what's wrong with me? Why can't I connect with people like I want to connect? There are millions of people that feel that same way. Millions. So how do you get rid of those feelings of not fitting in, being lonely, being depressed, having people think that you're rude or weird and you feel like you isolate yourself because of that. What what can you do? You can't go out and just find happiness. Happiness comes from inside you. Your mind creates your mood. You can change it right now, right this second. Yeah, you might be having a super crappy day, like I can't pay my bills, or I have a flat tire, my kids are being rotten, uh, my wife's a B-word today, whatever whatever you can come up with. People, People are rude at school, nobody understands me, but you can change your mindset and just in your mind just say, you know what, everybody else might be contributing to my day, not going as I want, but tomorrow's a new day. Five minutes from now is a new five minutes. I can't let all of these people and their unhappiness affect my happiness. So you need to put it in perspective that how you perceive the world is going to affect your mood. So change it. Don't go out there looking for other people to validate you, for other people to make you feel happy. You make yourself feel happy. How? Okay. If you are having a crappy day and you're home, watch a funny movie, watch a cartoon, turn on um, an audio book that's funny or happy or inspirational, sitting there and listening to sad music or watching something that's sad or depressing, watching the news. Oh my gosh. Turn off the news. What did I hear today? 
CNN stands for constant negative news. <laughs> so true. Like they're going to put out there what they can get ratings for. Just like any video that you see on TikTok or YouTube, the first five minutes that they can grab you, that ups their numbers. The news does the same thing. The longer they can keep you engaged, the more their ratings go up and they will just keep pumping out the negative because negative gets more attention and keeps your attention. Focus on the positive. That's all you have control over anyway. So just focus on what can make you happy and in turn makes everyone around you happy. When people are lonely, when things don't go right for themselves, they think, what's wrong with me? People that aren't lonely all the time and don't attribute failure to themselves, they think of new ways to have things happen. Oh, that didn't work out? Okay, maybe I'll try it this way instead. Um, I read that they liken it to the, the mice that go through the maze. If things don't work and things don't work and things don't work, they just try different things. They go away different ways in their maze. They do different things. Humans, exact opposite. They continually do the same thing over and over and over, expecting different results. And clearly, we all know that does not happen. So how can you change and become happy? Uh, start talking to as many people as you can. If you go, well, when you go, and most of us drive cars um, and have to go get gas. Maybe you don't drive a car. Maybe you ride a bike and you go to get coffee every day. There's, there's things that you do every day. You go to the store. Um, if you're a kid, <laughs> go to the store with your family. Go to the store with your mom. She needs help. Um, and if there's people there, I mean, you're interacting. There's people all around. And if they say, um, how are you doing today? Just ask them how they're doing. Don't just mumble, mm, I'm fine. Ask, ask them, how are, how are you doing? How's your day going? I have seen so many checkers at grocery stores. Just people don't even talk to them. They act like they're robots. And it makes me so sad. And I always try and interact with them. They probably hate it. I don't know. But I figure it's nicer than being ignored. Nobody likes the feeling of being ignored. So when I go through the line... How's your day going? Do you have to work late today? You know, tomorrow's weather's supposed to be nice. Hopefully you'll have a day off coming up soon and you can enjoy the weather, whatever. You just talk to people. You, it'll become easier and more comfortable to you. And you might actually impact and affect somebody else's day by doing that. Like, think of it that way. Somebody might be feeling worse than you. And all you have to do is interact with them, and it could turn their entire day around. Interact with as many people as you can. Say more than you would normally say. You know, if, if you're in a, a bookstore, a library, looking at books, and somebody walks by you, and what, what book is that? Don't just tell them the name. Say, oh, I decided to pick this one up because I heard it was really good um, from people that read say another book. It's, that could stimulate a conversation and you might make a friend. If nothing else, you just had a good interaction with somebody. Share things about yourself, especially in a conversation. Some people are just really hard to talk to. And I know that from experience. If you ask them questions and they just give you one word answers and it's like, okay. Or if they don't ask you anything about yourself. Like that's what conversation is. It's back and forth, back and forth, like a tennis match, ping pong, you name it, back and forth, back and forth. So if you want to get to know people better and have them get to know you better, there has to be an exchange. Just per pretend that every time you say something, then you are handing them a ball. And then when they say something, they hand you the ball back and you just do that back and forth and back and forth. And you're slowly getting yourself out of your funk of feeling alone and lonely. Your body and your mind will adapt to your environment, whether you are at the gym or you are at McDonald's. Your body and your mind are made to adapt to those situations. So you need to remember that what you put into your body and into your mind is crucial to how you feel.
If you are eating junk and taking in junk, you're going to feel like junk. That's just the way it is. It's true. If you eat good things and you read good things, if you take in good things, good food, good books, TED Talks, podcasts like this one, uh, just kidding, and you focus on things that inspire you and not put you in a negative place, you're just going to start to feel better. And as soon as you start feeling better, then you want to do things better for yourself. You want to interact with people because you're feeling confident. It's just a snowball that keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Wake up, get yourself out of bed, get yourself ready for your day. Even if you have nothing planned, I could take my own advice. Trust me, there are days where I just want to lay in bed. When I don't have work, I don't have anything that I have to do. I just want to lay there and watch stupid videos. And if they're not good videos, I can tell it affects my mood. Start your day off right. Get yourself out of bed. Take your shower. Get yourself ready for whatever could happen that day. And if you have nothing to do and your only thing is just staying at home, find a reason to get out of your house. Go to your library. Go to a thrift store. You don't have to spend money. Just get out of your house and you can just do a little experiment for yourself. Go to some store, go get gas, whatever, and interact with the checker. Interact with a person that's behind you in line. You could just say, geez, it's freezing out there. Or I wish I would have remembered to get gas yesterday before it was pouring down rain. Something like that. Even if they don't say anything back, you're putting yourself out there and that in itself feels good. Be who you want to be. If you watch a movie and you see a character on there that just seems like, wow, I wish I had that much confidence. I wish I could put myself out there like that. Take one thing, one tiny thing that they do in that movie and apply it to your life and see what happens. Be who you want to be. There's no, the sky is the limit. There's nothing that you cannot do or you cannot be if you put your mind to it. Just put yourself out there because you cannot do anything or be who you want to be in your bedroom, stuck in your bed. That Nothing's going to happen. You're only going to get out of it what you put into it. Be inspired to change. Be inspired to make new friends. You cannot choose your family and what you are brought up into, which, side note, I love my family. I am very blessed to be in the family that I'm in, so that is not what that means. (laughs) But for people that are born into families that are dysfunctional, not healthy, Choose to love those people anyway, but pick your friends. Choose your friends. Choose the people that you are surrounded with every day. And choose wisely. If you choose to be around drug drug addicts, the odds are pretty much there that you're going to become one of them. So be around people that inspire you to be better or be the person that is the inspiration. Uh, The What is it that Gandhi... Be the change that you want to see in the world. I hope this helped. If it didn't, I apologize for wasting the last uh, 25 minutes of your time. My intentions were pure. I want people out there to know that they are here for a reason. We all are here for a reason. We all have a purpose. And so your job is to go out and figure out what it is. If you'd like to reach out to me, If you need a friend, my email is donversations at gmail.com. You can find me on social media at donversations anywhere. I'd love to get to know you. I'd love to be your friend. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.